Our next topic here in the quadratic unit is the idea of what we call completing the square. And so before we actually do that, we're going to work backwards here. So let's go ahead and multiply the quantity x plus 3 squared. So as we said here, we're completing the square, so we're working backwards. So remember what that means is, it means we're going to literally take x plus 3, I'm going to write that down here, as part of our generic rectangle, we're going to multiply it by itself. So there's the other x plus 3. So this is x plus 3 quantity squared. Let's multiply it out. This would be x squared. This would be 3x. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times x is 3x. Altogether, we have x squared. We have a total of 3x and 3x is 6x. And then finally, we have a plus 9. So completing the square, essentially, is, is going to be really working backwards. And what that means is, is if we were given this quadratic, we would want to go ahead and write it back in this form right here. Now, some things to notice here would be this. If you have the x term here and you look at its coefficient, if you were to take half of 6 and you were to square it, well, what's half of 6? Well, half of 6 is 3. And if you were to take 3 and you square it, what do you get? You get the number here on the end. And that's going to be a relationship that holds true for any time we're completing the square. So we can basically take half of the coefficient of x, square it, and that will be our number over here. So how does that work out in terms of completing the square? So here's a couple examples here of completing the square. So over here we have x squared plus 8x, and over here we have x squared minus 14x plus 20. So we're missing the number here on the end. So all we're going to do is we're literally going to take half of the coefficient of x, and then we're going to square. Well, what's half of 8? Half of 8 is 4. And I actually meant to write squared right there. So we're going to take half of 8, and that's 4. We're going to square it, and that would be 16. So to complete the square, we would literally add on 16 here, and that would equal x plus 4 quantity squared. All right? Over here. What we do is look at the coefficient of x, and even though it's a minus here, it doesn't really matter. We're going to take half of that coefficient, so half times negative 14, and then we're going to go ahead and square it. Half of negative 14 is negative 7. If we take negative 7 and we square it, we get 49. Now, obviously, this isn't 49, so all we have to do is add another 29 onto there, and now all of a sudden we have 49. So we would need to add 29 here to complete the square. Together, we get x squared minus 14x plus 49 now. And if we want to write that in perfect square form, we would write that as x minus 7 quantity squared. And notice it's just half of the 14s right here. And because there's a minus in front of the 14, we put a minus here. Over here, half of 8 is 4, so it would be x plus 4 quantity squared. All right, so how do we actually use that here to solve equations? So what I have now is make it a little more complicated. So we have solving for x by completing the square. So let's go ahead and use the same procedure. And really the only difference is it's equal to zero here. We're over here, we didn't have equal to anything. So let's go ahead and do that now. So if we were to take half of 10, so half of 10, and I'm just saying 10 because I'm gonna end up squaring anyway. I know it says negative here. And if I were to take half of 10 and square it, that would be equivalent to 25. So in order to make this a 25, what am I going to need to do? Well, I'm going to need, need to add 9 to both sides. So if I add 9 on to here, I would get 25. Remember, though, if we're going to do it to both, I'm sorry, if we're going to do it to this side, we've got to do the other side as well. So we're going to wind up with, I'm going to write this over here, we're going to wind up with x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 9. And now what we can do is we can write this as a perfect square. So we're going to write it as x minus 5, that quantity squared equals 9. So to solve this, it comes down to really a simple thing that we've done in the past. It just looks a little different right now. And that is, how do we undo squares? Well, how do we undo squares is we square root both sides. So we're going to go ahead and square root. We're going to go and square root over here. So if we were to have a square root of a square, that means it's just x minus 5. Over here, the square root of 9 is 3, but actually it's going to be plus or minus 3. And the reason why is if I were to take positive 3 and square it, I would get 9. That's true. But if, also, if I took negative 3 and squared it, I would also get 9. So there's actually going to be two answers here. 
So what that means is we have two sets of answers here. One of them is x minus 5 equals the positive 3, or we have x minus 5 equals the negative 3. And if we went ahead here, added 5, added 5, one of the answers, therefore, is 8. On the other equation, if we added 5 to both sides, add 5, negative 3 plus 5 is 2, so we get x equals 2. So that's how we would solve by completing the square. And remember, what are these answers telling us? It's telling us basically where the x-intercepts are. So where are the x-intercepts? The x-intercepts would be at 8, 0, and also 2, 0 as well. So those would be two points we can use on our graph here if we were graphing our parabola. So that's how you solve by completing the square. It's a little complicated at first. Once you get used to it, it's not too bad.